So I'm working on a very big um, site on my current project, and it's got a lot of contours that are giving me some trouble in Revit. And um, because it creates a very, very heavy model. So I wanted to explore the different methodologies of creating topo surfaces in Revit and see if there, one way was better than another. So you'll see in this file, uh, this is an AutoCAD DWG file. I've created some contour lines and I've created them in a 100 foot square. And I've also created some points. I'm going to use a methodology of just using the lines to create a topo surface. And I'm going to use a methodology where I ex export the data of the uh, points and then drag those into Revit to create another topo surface and then compare the two. So here I am in Revit and this is the topo surface that I, I derived from contour line. And you'll see if I delete the topo surface, I'm left with a DWG import, which I'm also going to delete so I can do this all over and show you how it's done. So I'll go to my site plan and I'll go to my insert tab, import CAD, and I'll pull in my file called contour lines and I'll insert that origin to origin. So you see it's like a, a vessel with the AutoCAD drawing in it. And now I go to my massing at site tab, click the topo surface tool, and then create from import. So I'll select an import instance, which is this drawing file, and it brings up a list of things I can select from. So I'll check none and then just recheck contour. That's the the red layer with the lines on it, click OK. You'll see it's given me a, a topo surface. It's in the editor now. If I grab any of these points, I begin to act, I can actually mutate that topo surface, but I'll keep it for now the way it is and save out of the tool. And I'm left with, you know, a pretty plain Jane standard topo surface. You see there's a little flat here, and later on, that flat is going to be significant. It'll show the difference between these two methods. So now I'm in the Revit file that has a topo surface which was made from point data. And you'll see if I select it, delete it, there's nothing there because it wasn't made from an underlying drawing. It was made from data, uh, Cartesian data brought in from the AutoCAD drawing. And I want to show you how that's done. So if I come back to my DWG and copy one of my topo lines over here. The, the way I made these points was to simply use the divide tool, DIV, grab a line, and then in this case, I just click 10 and divided it into 10, uh, 10 segments. It really laid 10 points on that line. And it's missing the end, so I have to come in and manually type PO for point and do a point on the end of each line. It's pretty tedious. And you know I've done this before in an automated manner in Rhino and Grasshopper. Not quick one would do this quickly in AutoCAD if you have a lot of contours. But suffice to say, I can now ha have this data and extract it and take it into Revit to make contours. So the way I'm going to do that is to type the data, and I get tooltips, and one of them is data extraction. So it's asking me, do you want to create a new data extraction? And um, I'll click Next, and I'll just click on a, a file I've made before called Contour Points DXE. I don't really know what this DXE does. Um, it's some intermediate file. Um, I don't know if it matters or not. I'm just going to make it, leave it, and ignore it to get through this process. But I do that, and I click Next. And I really only want my points, so I'm going to unselect Polyline, and I'm going to unselect Line, and then click Next. And then over on the right, I'm going to unselect everything except for geometry. And you see that it just leaves me the Cartesian geometry of the points. And then when I go into my next menu, I'm going to delete. I'm going to actually turn off show count column and show name column and just keep the um, Cartesian coordinate data. And it's very important that your file be set to decimal. This is mine is set to decimal inches because if you don't, Revit's going to get confused by the symbology of the feet and inch symbols. So I click Next, and then it wants me to output the data to an external file. I'm going to want to do it to a CSV file, which is a comma separated value file. That's what Revit will want to see. And then I'm going to check this box and browse out to a location. So you'll see I already have a file here called Contour Line CSV. I'm just going to overwrite that and then save. Click Next. Click Finish. And now I've pushed that data out. And the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to drag it into Revit.
So now I'm back in Revit, and this is the file where I erased with the point generated contours. I'm going to again go into my site plan. I'm going to go this time. I'm going to go directly to the massing and site tab. Go into the topo surface tool, and then when I use create from import, instead of selecting an import instance, which is what I do with a drawing, I'm going to say specify points file, and I'm going to pick my CSV file, open it up. And I'm going to set those units to decimal inches, which is what my AutoCAD file was. Click OK. And you'll see that again, it's giving me a series of points, points that I just told it to bring in. And they're still malleable. But it's created my, my contours. And, and these, these intermediate contours, the lighter line, are actually the display variable of the contour tool. So I finish out see that I get, you know, pretty much the same thing as before, right? Well, not really. Let's go for a second, and um, I'm going to tab back and forth. So this is my point-generated file, and this is my line-generated file. And remember, I was pointing out the flat near the top of the contours in this instance. I'm going to turn my file a little bit, zoom in, and I'm going to tab back, turn my file, and zoom in. And I tab back and forth, and you see that there's actually there's a difference here. There's a different um, manner of extrapolating between the points files and the line files. And I, I want to get a little bit deeper into this to figure out what the differences are. So what I'm going to do is go, and I'm not going to do it in full because you guys probably don't already know how to do this. But I'm going to use the export tool, and I'm going to export out to DWG each one of these topo surfaces from directly from this view. Then I'm going to pull them into SketchUp and see what those guys look like and see if I can, you know, determine the differences between the two textures. Right now it looks like the, the Revit files are reasonably the same size. And I think that the um, SketchUp files, in my past experience, had also been quite similar in size. But there's kind of an interesting difference, and I'm about to show you what that is. So now I'm in SketchUp, and I'm in the file... That is the contours generated from contour lines. And again, you see that there's a very, very broad um, facet at the bottom and at the top. If I go to my other file, you'll see that's actually tessellated in a more even manner. There's more even facets at the bottom. I was kind of curious why that difference existed. So I thought I'd try a few things. One is I would come in to the one generated points and begin to measure from point to point. And you see down here I'm getting a 10 foot to an 11 16th. Same, 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 the same. So clearly this file has literally taken my point generated surface and tessellated it using those points as the generation point for each facet. If I go back into the other file, and I take some measurements. I get eight foot five nine sixteen. Same. Same. The same. And now it's changed, and that was curious to me. What I think is happening, I haven't, verif I haven't verified this yet. I think the original arcs that I drew to create the polyline. The breaks in those polyline arcs are the breaks where it's actually subdividing and creating its tessellations. And it's creating no tessellation at the bottom because that's generated off of one big simple line. And I'm not quite sure if it's just coincidence that they happen to be of similar size in the main body of this. Or, you know, I see that there's like a finer grain of tessellation at the top of this, which may be due to the fact that the upper curve is a tighter radius. But nevertheless, you know, there is a difference, and uh, the point generated file is clearly developing its tessellation from the points, whereas the line generated file is cracking the polylines up into segments and then subdividing those in some way that it seems to find intelligent. So that's, I don't know what this means. I don't know, you know, in certain circumstances, if one is going to be better than the other. But there is a difference, and it's kind of an interesting difference, and I thought I'd share it with you. Thanks for watching.